Here's how to send temperature and humidity data from an ESP32 microcontroller to Home Assistant. In this video I'm using a DHT22 temperature and humidity sensor. However, with a few modifications the code I demonstrate here will potentially work with a wide range of sensors. First up you'll need an ESP32 microcontroller and a sensor. I'm using this DHT22 temperature and humidity sensor. It's better than the DHT11, but it's still really freaking annoying to use, especially with Home Assistant. More on these problems later. First, let's get everything up and running. So I'm going to assume that you've already installed Home Assistant on your PC or device, and you can log into it successfully. So the first thing we need to do is to install an MQTT broker. To do this, you need to go to Settings, then Devices and Services, and then click on this Add Integration button. So you need to search for MQTT. That's the one, so click on this. And we just need the regular one, not one of the others. So you see, I've already configured one, so I can't add another one. More on that later, but we can't actually add MQTT yet because we need an MQTT broker. So the broker I'd recommend is a open source one called Eclipse Mosquito. Presumably you can download it here and install it if you know what you're doing. I don't really know what I'm doing on this, so I used a Docker container. So I'm still quite new to using Docker, but I run Home Assistant in a Docker container, and you can also get one for Mosquito. So to get the MQTT broker working, you run this command line option from a command prompt, and I've linked to it in the description. So basically, you just run this command, and then it starts the Mosquito server, and then you can see some output here in the command window. It's really important while you're testing this, and whenever you want the server running, you have to leave this command window open. So if you close it, then the MQTT service will stop running. So back in Home Assistant, we need to add the MQTT service. So if it doesn't appear here in the list of integrations, you need to click on the Add Integration button. So I'll configure mine now. So we need to configure the settings so that the Home Assistant can connect to the MQTT broker. So the broker needs an IP address, and you need to put in the IP address of your Home Assistant server. So mine is running on my PC, which has a fixed internal IP address on my local network. So I put that in here. Port is almost always 1883, unless you've specifically changed it. I haven't specified a username or a password, but if you're doing this in a production environment, then I recommend that you do this, but obviously it's okay on a home network. And that's about all you need to do there. So the next thing we need to do is to edit the Home Assistant configuration files and add in some MQTT devices. The first thing to do is we need to edit configuration YAML. So it's this one here. So I'll put this in the description because it took me a very, very long time to figure out how to configure these sensors. So I've basically got one DHT22 sensor, but obviously this sensor can read two values, the humidity and the temperature. So I think the best way to do it is to set it up as two separate sensors. So we have a kind of hierarchy here. So if you have a lot of sensors, you could potentially put this into a sensors file. I did have huge problems getting that to work, and then I realised that some of the code I copied and pasted from the internet had a degrees sign in it, and Home Assistant really didn't like that. So this will work, but it really took me an awful long time to figure this out. And if you're copying and pasting it from elsewhere on the internet, be aware that so many of the configurations on other websites don't actually work. So you need to save the YAML file, and then if you go into Settings, you can go up here, you will need to restart Home Assistant. If there's a problem with your YAML file, then it will complain about it, and I think it goes in the logbook here, so normally it will tell you if there's something wrong with it. So if it's okay, then you can go to Devices and Services under Settings, and then MQTT, and you should have two entities now listed. There two, should be two different sensors, so let's click on those. So now we have our humidity sensor and our temperature sensor. So we haven't actually written our code yet, but if your sensor was connected, then you would see this history of the data that's being fed from the sensor. So it's a nice way of telling that it's actually working. 
So now I have a walk through the ESP32 sketch that we need to send data from the sensor to the home assistant service via the MQTT broker. So if you want this code, there's a link in the description. So it's kind of glued together from three examples. There's the basic ESP32 connecting to Wi-Fi example. There's the basic DHT, that's the sensor sketch. And there's also pub sub client is the library required to connect to MQTT. So you'll probably already have this Wi-Fi library installed. For the other two, you need to go to tools and then manage libraries and ensure you've got the DHT library. So I'll click on the ones I've already installed and it's this DHT sensor library by Adafruit. As you'll see later, I've had a few problems getting data from this sensor, so I did also try this one. So you could always try this one instead. You'll also need pub sub client. So pub sub client by Nick O'Leary, this is the one that connects to the MQTT server. So at the top, you need to put in your SSID of the network and the password and the MQTT server IP address. So again, my PC that's running Home Assistant has this fixed IP address. So this specifies which pin the DHT sensor is connected to on the ESP32. It's really important to use an ADC1 pin if you're using Wi-Fi, as we are in this example. So don't connect it to one of the ADC2 pins because they're required by the Wi-Fi. So if you're using a DHT11, then you'll have to uncomment this line and comment out the DHT22. So now we initialize things and set up the Wi-Fi, and this connects to the MQTT server. Incidentally, you'll have to change the port number here if you're not running the MQTT broker on port 1883. So here in the loop, we read the temperature and humidity. As I'll explain later, the DHT sensor isn't very reliable, so if it fails to read, then it won't send data if it doesn't have any, so it will go back to the start of the loop there. So it will call the trigger alert function and send it if we do actually have the temperature and humidity. So I guess this is the most interesting function in the code, so this connects to the MQTT server and sends in the payload of the data. So we're sending in this JSON string with the temperature and the humidity. Incidentally, you can use this code on an ESP8266, but one thing you have to do is to get rid of these escapes. Uh, you can't escape the curly braces in an ESP8266, but apparently the ESP32 requires it in this format. So when you're sending messages by MQTT, you have to specify a topic. So here, the topic is DHT22 forward slash zero one. So if you had several sensors, then you could change this number here, zero two, zero three, and onwards. So that will help the server or home assistant find where it's coming from. And the message we send in is this JSON string here. So we send in both temperature and humidity. Back in the YAML file, this is the configuration file for Home Assistant, you'll notice that we've got value JSON, humidity, and temperature. These labels here must match the labels in the code. The topic is also important here, so DHT01, see that matches the code. So if you're changing things, then it's critical to change this to match the YAML file and also these variables here. So now we configured the ESP32, we need to set up some sort of dashboard here so that we can see the resulting data in Home Assistant. So I've set up a dashboard called My Dashboard and I have a humidity sensor and a temperature sensor. So the way you add these is to click on the pencil icon here and then you can add card and you can select something here. This gauge is really useful. So this is quite good. I'll click on one of these. So you can specify a name, the units, and I don't think I'm using themes. Not sure what these are. You can set a minimum to maximum. As you can see, my humidity sensor has gone a bit crazy, but more on that later. It's quite nice as well. You can display it as a needle. And if you click on severity, then you can set zones on the dial. So you can have a green, yellow, and a red zone. So this is really nice if you want to pretend you're Homer Simpson and you're monitoring a nuclear power station. There's also a history one. 
So the history graph is like this. I don't know if it's quite appropriate really for the temperature sensor, but as you can see, it's got the different readings and also it shows how long they were a specific temperature. So that could be quite useful as well. I like this one as well. This one is, ah, uh, this is a sensor card configuration. So you just have to select the sensor. So humidity and temperature. So I really like this one. That's something nice if you're continually monitoring something. So once you upload this sketch, then you'll see the output is here. I did mention earlier, I had quite a few problems with the DHT sensor getting it to work. As you can see, it often says fail to read from sensor. This is incredibly common if you're using the DHT sensors. Sometimes it does also work, although I have found that the temperature is way too low. It should be about 24 centigrade but it's consistently measuring about 12, so that's definitely wrong. And the humidity is all over the place, so I don't know why we have 3000% humidity. It should be about 50. So I have tracked down my woes here to the fact that I'm using the Wi-Fi. There is a sketch here you can test. So if you go to File and Examples, and it's the DHT Sensor Library and DHT Tester. So this is really useful if you just want to test that your sensor is up and running. So all you have to do here is to change your pin and also the sensor type if you're using a DHT11. So if you just change the pin, then upload the sketch, then you can test if your ESP32's sensor is actually working. So I have two DHT22's and I know that there's nothing actually wrong with them. They do work perfectly when I use this sketch. So the sensor data does seem to be very sensitive to the Wi-Fi. Strangely, I even wrote a version of this where the Wi-Fi was turned off when the sensor was being read, but that didn't seem to make any difference. So I'm not really sure and I haven't really solved it. I think it's hardware related, not software related. So I tried moving the sensor away from the ESP32 by using longer cables, but that didn't work. I tried 3.3 volts and 5 volts, but there was no difference there either. So back to the dashboard, and if you want to test it without using the ESP32 sensor, then I recommend a little app called MyMQTT. It's available for Android devices, and there may also be an iPhone version. So all you need to do on that is to connect to this server. So as you saw earlier, it was 192.168.0.9, so just connect to that one. The standard MQTT port. And then you'll need to subscribe to a topic. So that was DHT22 slash 01. And then you just have to manually add in the JSON strings. So the temperature and humidity. And I've set both of these to zero. So I'll just click on publish. And you can see immediately the humidity and temperature goes down to zero. So this is a really neat way of testing it. And I also like that you can reset it like this after changing it with the ESP32. There is also this desktop application called MQTTX. It was quite useful, but I couldn't seem to change this value here. So it's always sending to the testing topic. I just don't know how you can change that value there. So that's basically what you need to do to send sensor data from an ESP32 microcontroller to Home Assistant. Thanks for watching.